Governor Evers proclaimed this the year of clean drinking water in Wisconsin. He's taking action on lead laterals and other pollutants in ground and surface water. The governor last week signed an executive order creating a lead czar, a position at the Department of Health Services to coordinate efforts to fight lead contamination. He's also committing millions of dollars to the effort. We're talking now with Health Services Secretary Andrea Palm. She's at our Madison affiliate WKOW TV. Thank you for your time. Thank you for having me. So first of all, this position led czar. What exactly will that person do? So as you know, the governor's executive order tapped DHS to lead the coordination efforts as it as it relates to lead uh, abatement, lead um, uh, prevention for the for the state. So we'll be working very closely with our sister agencies uh, and particularly the Department of Natural Resources, which has a primary responsibility for the enforcement and regulation of uh, water quality. Um, and so our, our lead person that we'll designate at the department will do those coordination activities. We'll be working very closely with DNR and other agencies that have responsibilities as it relates to reducing the dangers of lead in, in drinking water, uh, in lead paint, and other hazards that we see around the state. The pushback I've heard is that there are already a lot of people working on this problem. Do you think this position is really necessary or explain why you think it is? So I think one of the things the governor has been very focused on and he's challenged us all to do and to do well is to connect the dots and to coordinate with each other about how we're solving problems for the families of Wisconsin. And the lead issue and clean water uh, and lead hazards more broadly in homes is a place where we have a lot of important work to do. And so leveraging our resources together to make the whole greater than the sum of the parts is what he's really challenging us to do and I think that this position at the Department of Health Services will help us do that in an effective way so that we're sure we are firing on all cylinders to address this problem for Wisconsin. So between the lead czar as well as more money for this effort plus the governor ordering state agencies to work together will that solve this problem? So lead in Wisconsin is a significant problem it is predominantly uh, a problem as it relates to lead paint in homes and so the money that we are going to be receiving th from the federal government on this for this project will focus a lot on uh, lead uh, homes and the abatement of lead paint in homes and that is a project that will take us many uh, multiple years to get through um, and so we will continue to focus on it um, but I think the idea that we are going to solve this problem in a year or two years uh, we, we need to set reasonable expectations about the amount of money that's available uh, and about how quickly we can make it through the number of homes that need abatement and so we, we will stay focused on it we will be efficient with our resources um, but it will take us a number of years to get through uh, all of the homes that need to be remediated. While we have you, I want to make sure to ask about vaping because this is making big news. Teenagers mm -hmm. are showing up to the hospital with lung damage who have admitted to mm -hmm. vaping in July. Eight cases mm -hmm. reported. Mm -hmm. Does this concern you? Yeah, I really appreciate the question um, and, and our partners at the Children's Hospital in Milwaukee for flagging this for us uh, and allowing our uh, um, health investigators at DHS to, to figure out and, and be helpful through investigating and talking with these adolescents and their families about what the common link might be that has caused this severe lung disease for them. Um, and that common link, as you mentioned, is that they all have uh, vaped in the last two weeks to a month. And so we continue to raise the red flags and the concerns about vaping, whether it's commercial products or um, street-based vaping products that, that you make yourself. Uh, Adolescents need to be really cautious about these products. Uh, obviously, this cluster is particularly worrisome, um, but the health effects of vaping more broadly are much unknown. Uh, we do know that it changes uh, brain development uh, for a starter, but the long-term health effects are still unclear, and so we caution very strongly against the use of vaping products. And we think parents ought to understand that tobacco doesn't look like what it used to look like. Um, and so these new vaping products uh, don't look like traditional cigarettes and we need to be vigilant and to talk to our kids about the potential dangers of vaping. I've talked to doctors who agree and say the effects are unknown because this is still a relatively new trend even though it's been around for several years now so they don't have studies like they do on smoking cigarettes so what 
what can DHS really do about this? So I think, again, one of our primary focuses is on public education and making sure um, that what we do know is known and that what we don't know is, don't, is known because we cannot allow uh, uh, commercial products to suggest that they're safe uh, because we don't know that. And um, early indications are, uh, like this cluster, that there are implications for your health um, from vaping uh, uh, vaping products. So people need to know what we know and what we don't know and be very cautious uh, about their use. Andrea Palm, thank you. Thank you. Next, Wisconsin lawmakers putting their stories out in weekly podcasts.